The release of Betaflight 4.6 has brought with it some exciting new features, including a position and altitude hold, which I've combined into a panic button. But that's brought a lot of questions from people that don't have GPS. The main question being from more inexperienced pilots, how can I add a GPS? Let's get into it. So first of all, of course, you're going to need a flight controller. Here we're using, as an example, the TuneRC Poly F405. This is going to go into my ITSI Evo because I'm completely rebuilding the thing. I figured since I was completely rebuilding it, then it makes sense to put in the recommended flight controller. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is find out what UART that you need to solder your GPS to. You can technically solder it to any UR, but some are reserved for the digital FPV pads. So the best thing to do, if you are inexperienced, is to grab the manual. This is the TuneRC manual for the Poly F405 and find out what one they recommend you do it to, because that way you know there'll be no conflicts. Now, TuneRC recommend that we do it to the UR number three. So then what we need to do is, first of all, find UR number three, which is the four pads on the furthermost side. So you've got a TX pad, an RX pad, a five volt pad, and a ground pad. The first job is to pre-tin each one of those pads with a little bit of solder. We can even double up this video into a little bit of a soldering tutorial for anybody that's new to it. There's a couple of prerequisites that I would recommend here. You need solder with lead in it. My personal recommendation is TBS, Team Black Sheep Solder. This is something I've used for the past four years probably every day if i'm completely honest um and it's the one that i would recommend the most the second thing that i would need to recommend to you is that you get a soldering iron that has at least 480 degrees as the maximum temperature because what you want to do is you want to heat up that pad drop the solder on and get that iron away to allow it to cool down problem isn't too much heat the problem is too much heat for too long and if you haven't got a really explosive heat you're going to be on the pad for far too long that's all four of them done and pretend we can have a quick look at it the pad on the far left has got a little bit too much solder but we can make it work it's not it's not too bad but it's probably a little bit too much now i need you to then get your gps module the one i'm using is the flyfish m10 we have a look on the back of it and find out which wire goes to which and you can see that by having a look one says t one says r one says 5v and one says g for ground your tx pad or t goes to your rx pad whenever you're wiring up a ur you always cross them over so your tran your tx or your transmit goes to your rx or your receive so the first pad on the flight controller is TX3. So we know that the yellow wire coming out of the GPS is the R wire. So that goes to the T pad. So receive from the GPS goes to transmit for on the flight controller. The next pad along is RX3. So for that one, we need our TX wire. And we know from looking at the back of the GPS, that's our white wire. Now again, for any newbies in soldering, it's a case of you heat up the pad so that the solder on the pad is molten. You slide the wire into the molten solder and you remove the iron and allow the molten solder to cool around the wire. The next one is the five volt pad. And again, that's these are dead easy now because the five volt goes to the five volt and the ground goes to the ground. So these are ones you, you mustn't mix up. So have a look on the back of your GPS, whether it's the Flyfish or whatever, find out which one is the five volt one, and then do exactly the same thing. Heat up the solder until it's molten, slide the wire in and remove the soldering iron. Now, don't do a particularly brilliant job on that. We get away with it. I think I possibly just add a bit more solder just to tidy up a little bit. Now you will notice that my ground wire on this is a lot thicker than the others. And that was because I had it in a quad that had loads and loads of interference. Your ground wires will be the same size as all your other wires. So don't worry about it. It's a little bit more wieldy to uh, to do, but I figured it was there and there wasn't much point in taking it off just to put a different one on. 
Um, and it was, like I say, it was just because of the club that it's come out of that had a lot of interference. Make sure, have a real close inspection now and have a real close look and make sure that none of your pads are bridged. And by that, we mean that the solder from one pad hasn't jumped across to the other pad. Then you need to twist your wires. This just helps with interference. Again, it's probably not as needed as it was as when I first started, um, but it just helps tidy everything up and, and stops things going awry when they are inside the quad. Now, I'm just gonna do a little bit of tidying on this and we'll move on to the next step. I'd recommend at this stage you grab a smoke stopper and a battery and you just make sure that everything's okay before you plug it into the USB. We can see here, um, obviously I've, I've wired up an ELRS receiver, that's for another video, but we can see that that's fine and then we can see it, that the GPS is also illuminated. So that suggests that everything's okay, the flight control is booted fine, we've used that smoke stop and then we can move on to the next phase and that's plugging it in to your USB. So your first step is going to be having a look at the ports tab in Betaflight and you're going to need to enable GPS and set your board rate. But how do you know which one to enable and what your board rate is? Well, you've just soldered it to the R and TX3 pad. So you know that you're going to be enabling GPS on the UR number three. But how do you know how to set the board rates, etc.? For that, you need to get a hold of the manual came with your GPS. Now, maybe it's come on a piece of paper, but maybe you have to download it. Thankfully, the resources are all out there and available to us. I'm going to plug a guidebook called the FPV guidebook, which has everything in it that you could ever possibly imagine. I appreciate obviously things change all the time, but this is a wonderful resource for building quads. And I am going to have a, a more detailed look at it. But just for this particular one, I'm going to assume that you haven't got it and show you how you get it. So you could go to a website and you could have a look at the manufacturer's instructions. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to UART number three and we're going to go to the drop down and we're going to select GPS. And then we're going to go into the setup tab and just make sure that GPS is enabled in the left hand side uh, checkboxes. And then we're going to go into the GPS tab. Now, this is where you're going to need to refer back to the manual of the manufacturer because you're going to need to know what settings to put in here to make your GPS work effectively. You can get away with putting some of the wrong settings in, but it'll take longer to fix and won't be as reliable. And ultimately, we're doing this to save your quad from crashing in an emergency, whether it be from a loss of signal or whether you actually utilize the panic button feature that I made a video of just the other week. So I found the information that I need on your FPV website, which is a UK retailer. And we can see that it tells us to select U-blocks, auto board, so on and so forth. And that's what we're gonna to need to select in this screen to make sure that your GPS will function as effectively and as efficiently as you possibly can. Please do double check if you're not using a Flyfish M10 what the settings are of, of your particular GPS module. So very simply, just follow step by step the buttons to press and to check and to uncheck and the drop downs to use based upon the instruction manual from your GPS module manufacturer. Those are the settings as you could see on my phone that I followed and that's what I've put onto my GPS screen. And that has GPS set up on your quad for you. Now, you may then want to take advantage of the panic button feature. There is a, gonna be a link at the top and at the, in the end screen for that panic button feature and how to fully set that up. I would also recommend that you go into fail safe and that you change your fail safe mode to GPS rescue. Now, what I would also recommend that you do here is number one, enable arming without a fix and what that means is if you lose signal or you initiate gps rescue your quad will just fall from the sky if you've taken off without a fix however if you take off and you have got a fix and you lose signal it'll come back to you my recommendation however before you do anything like that is you enable it you go to a safe field or somewhere safe and you test the feature so you can add it to a switch, like you can add any feature to a switch. 